As work began to bring 25 kilometres of subsea cable from Hartlepool's docks to Cornwall, contractors worked on land to construct the vital links between the wave hub and the shore. The work marks a feverish period for the onshore works of the wave hub, a £42 million project to create the world's largest test site for wave energy technology off the north coast of Cornwall as well as a beach pit that will house the connecting blocks between the offshore and onshore cables, engineers have been busy building a new substation to be installed with more than £1 million worth of electrical equipment. WaveHub has a capacity of 20 megawatts, making it the biggest test site for wave energy in the world. A large transformer arrives on site and is installed as part of the electrical equipment that will divert power captured by the wave hub onto the national grid. Jim Price, head of procurement at the Southwest RDA, described how pivotal the stage is to the overall project. The substation works that has just commenced follows on from the directional drilling and forms a substantial element of the onshore works. In itself, it's not a very large building, but it will occupy uh, all of the electrical equipment that will deal with the offshore wave energy converters uh, and, and incorporate something like a million pounds worth of, uh, of technology including a, a large transformer power factor equipment which will smooth the power that the wave energy converter developers produce uh, and the usual controls and monitoring systems to make sure that everything is operating safely out to sea. After the substation is in place, workmen are faced with the task of threading cables through ducts running under the dunes to the beach pit beyond. As the majority of the shoreside work drew to a close, the visit of a government minister for business and enterprise signalled a milestone in the shoreside operations to bring the wave hub to fruition. Mark Prisk joined contractors and regional development agency staff to announce a further £1.5 million investment in wave energy technology, a move praised by those leading the project. It's a signal that the government are committed to marine renewable energy, are committed to developing facilities like this, um, and it marks the start of a really exciting piece as we look at the offshore phase of construction. The next stage involved laying around 1.8 kilometres of cable, weighing close to 100 tonnes, being spooled off the back of the cable-laying ship Nordica. Boys are attached to keep it afloat. The end of the cable is connected to a powerful winch on the beach by a steel wire and pulled ashore before being buried deep under the sand. It makes for an unusual sight on the golden sands at Hale and proved to be a challenging part of the operation. We've had a lot of challenges in the past couple of months, but, but we're actually getting some progress now. Uh, the, the cable's on the beach, uh, the cable's been trenched in this near shore section, and uh, we're continuing to lay out to, to the hub lay down location. So uh, we're, we're starting to see some results now. It's a very challenging area to work in. Obviously this area's been chosen for its, uh, its, its waves which are, are, are big in the winter and the summer. Uh, and that's caused problems for us because uh, working in these conditions is, is very difficult with, with bad weather and, and big waves. Uh, but, but I think overall we've done very well with the challenges we've faced. Everything on shore is now ready for the wave hub itself to be installed on the seabed and truly become a cornerstone of the UK's ambition to grow a world-class marine energy industry.